Today is all about travel tripods, and I never thought that a tripod would be a hot topic of conversation, uh, but recently they've really become one, and there's a whole lot of hype around different travel tripods, and it's all totally ridiculous, and this has been on my video making list for a while. This is my favorite tripod ever. Been using it for over a year. This is not a paid video, but wow, I wanna help you save money on a travel tripod. The problem is that I've heard some people say they spend you know, 400, 500, even $1,000 on a small compact travel tripod like this. And that's totally insane. Never spend $1,000 on a tripod. In all my years of doing video, the only time I can really think of needing a heavy duty tripod that would cost over $1,000 is for some of the cameras that I use at work where we have a big full-size camera and a big full-size teleprompter and it needs to move around and tilt up and down and lift and lower and those sometimes need big heavy duty tripods. But for pretty much everything else, you don't need that. And there's a couple of reasons why I think you should really look at this tripod. First and foremost, this tripod is $200. That is a reasonable price for a tripod, but it's also really durable, really reliable, and has a ton of cool features that are actually helpful. I've traveled all over the world with this tripod. I've used it in pretty much every weather condition you can imagine, and it has held up terrific. So here's a basic, oh, how do you do screen recording on an iPad? There, now I think I'm doing it. I bought mine from B&H Photo because I like B&H Photo. Uh, this is the Benro Travel Angel Series 1 tripod and it comes in a few different options. This one is the aluminum version, which has a maximum load capacity of 17.6 pounds. It has a maximum height of 58 and a half inches and a minimum height of 16 and a half inches and its folded length is 22.6 inches. Its weight is 3.9 pounds, so it's basically four pounds. It costs $199. Uh, you can get a heavier duty version that can take up to 22 pounds. That costs $250. There's also a carbon fiber version, which costs a little bit more. It's $296 for a version that takes 17.6 pounds. And for a version that takes 22 pounds, it's $400. So the most expensive version of this tripod is $400. The carbon fiber, 17.6 pound capacity weighs 3.4 pounds. So the reason that I got the aluminum version, as cool as carbon fiber is, is there's really only a half pound difference between the two. And that honestly doesn't make that much of a difference. To give you a frame of reference for 17.6 pounds of load capacity on here, I normally use this tripod with my Canon 6D Mark II. That's the camera that I'm using to film this video right now. And usually that camera has a battery grip attached to it. And oftentimes I use a variety of lenses, but very frequently it's the 24 to 105 and the 16 to 35 on this tripod. Both of those are very big lenses. And more often than not, I'll actually have this Rode VideoMic Pro attached to the top of the camera as well. And this tripod has no problem handling all of those things all at once. Over the past year, this tripod has pretty much replaced my Joby Gorillapod that I used to use a lot. And obviously there's quite a difference in size between these two, but the flexibility and stability and control of this is really worth it. The legs have multiple adjustments. You can just pop these little levers out and then if you want the legs to be able to go out a little bit wider, or get really low to the ground, the tripod gives you that option. There's also the option to completely take out the center column and mount it upside down, which I've done a few times and it's really cool because then your camera is mounted really low to the ground. It's really the only thing I don't like about this tripod though because I have a hard time getting the center column back in once I do that, so that's why I'm not doing it right now. This is one of the things that made me want to start making this video because I saw a few examples of new tripods that have come out on like Kickstarter and other campaigns that are really expensive and they're supposed to be super revolutionary. And I've seen a few videos where people take tripods like this that have the twist releases for the leg sections. And they try to act like this is a really hard thing to deal with on a travel tripod. The only downside to a twist lock is that when you just glance at it, you can't tell if it's open or closed. If you have a clamp lock or one that like, you know, it's a tab that opens and closes, it's very easy to look at it and know if it's locked or not. It's the only downside. I've seen videos where people are going, yeah, my old twist tripod, you have to open it and put it out, and open it and take it out and open it and take it out 
and you have to do that for all of the legs. That's totally insane. <laughs> like, that is not at all how you take out a travel tripod. All you do, you just grab all of these at once, unlock them, extend it, close them. That's it. To kind of give you a better idea of that, let's put a timer on the screen and we'll see how long it takes me to take this from fully compact to fully extended. Aside from the legs, the head of this tripod is a Benro B0, and I know they have a few different models of this B series head, but it's basically a standard fluid ball head. You have a pan control, you have the ball adjustment, and then you also have a friction control which lets you decide how tough or easy it is to move everything around. It's very free moving, it's easy to mount your camera at any angle that you want. And even though this is really not a video fluid head, since it's a ball mount, it is a really smooth <laughs> tripod head, and I've actually been able to use it very carefully to get some pretty smooth shots when I need to in a pinch. If this is the only tripod I have, and I've got my camera on it, I just want to get a quick little pan, this actually works pretty well. The plate has a very simple double lock release, which is all controlled by one lever. So you first, you loosen it and pull this lever all the way out, and that's the first release, and then you unscrew it, to release the plate. Any good travel tripod is going to be able to be used without any specialized tools to put the plate on and off of your camera. This one has a little thumb screw that opens up and then the screw itself actually has a flat slot on it. So you could use a screwdriver or a coin or a key. Basically, you're never gonna be out of luck. If you take this out with you hiking somewhere, if you go on a trip, if you leave your camera bag in the car, you don't need any specialized tools in order to put this on and off of your camera. A few other nice features, this tripod does have a hook at the bottom of the center column, which is great because when it's fully extended, especially if you're outdoors somewhere, you can hang a weight or hang your camera bag, hang something from it to give it a little extra stability so it's not gonna tip over or blow over in the wind. Normally I just leave the tripod like this when I'm traveling with it in my camera bag and I just strap it to the back of my camera bag and it works out great. But if you want to get a little more compact, all you do is extend the center column, pop open the legs, and then it kind of looks like this. So it's a little wider here, but the whole thing is a bit shorter. Many times I put this in carry-on luggage on a plane and it works great. And even though it's not the smallest tripod in the world, it is very lightweight and when it is folded up, it's relatively tiny. It can be sort of tough to tell on camera. So here's a comparison with the tripod and a soda can. So you're probably familiar with the size of a soda can. As you can see, when it's all collapsed, it's really not that much different in diameter. It's a little bit bigger, but it can definitely fit in camera bags, in pouches. It's not a difficult tripod to travel with or to carry with. Now this Benro tripod also comes with a couple cool accessories. When you get it, it comes in this really nice carry bag, which is like ultra high quality and durable. And unfortunately, I don't actually use this bag very much because it is a little bit bulky. And usually I'm not gonna carry my camera bag, whatever other stuff I carry, and a separate tripod bag. But it comes with this sort of like lightweight sleeve, and I do use this a lot. So if you put it in the bag and zip it up, this makes it really easy and safe to transport with your other luggage. Now if you buy this tripod, you also get a couple other cool things in this bag. You get a shoulder strap if you need to carry it. You do get a few tools and parts. So there's an Al there a couple Allen keys in there and then these spikes. The spikes can actually be mounted on the bottom of the legs. You can replace these little rubber points with the metal spikes. And then really the only issue that I've had with this tripod other than the center column being difficult to take out and put in, is that every so often, these little screws right here will start to come loose and then the legs won't stay out. They'll start to kind of become loose and, and that's what this Allen key is for. So basically every two or three months, you just need to tighten up these screws and then everything is good to go again. Now this is a travel tripod, so it does need to have a few special features for travel. One thing you get with the tripod is this, which is a little post right here. One of the tripod's legs 
The one that has this pad on it has a little unlock icon. And you can actually twist it and then unscrew this entire leg. And then you put this piece on top of it. And now you've got a monopod instead of a tripod. It's really cool to be able to travel knowing that you've got a monopod with you at all times. And there's one last thing that this tripod comes with, which is totally silly and probably something you'll never use, except I have used it once in a very specific scenario. But it's something that makes me totally like love this tripod because it's so ridiculous. It's probably the most ridiculous accessory a piece of camera gear has ever come with. When you open your tripod, you're gonna find this which is a piece of wood. It looks like a wooden doorknob. And what you'll find is it fits directly on the leg. And now, instead of a monopod, you have yourself a walking stick, <laughs> which is so ridiculous and silly. And I kind of laughed at that and I thought I'd never use that until last summer, Heather and I were on our trip to Switzerland and we were hiking through some hills and I had my camera bag on and I was kind of losing stability and I was like, oh my God, I need a walking stick. And then I had a walking stick with me and it was really funny to be able to use that. It was funny. See, she says it was funny. <laughs> You're probably not gonna buy this tripod because it has a walking stick feature, but the whole point of a travel tripod is it should make traveling with your camera gear a little bit easier and a little bit more fun. The other thing, again, that I wanna emphasize with this tripod is that I've used this for over a year. My bigger tripod is pretty much right now and I'm in here filming because it's big and it's heavy. If I'm traveling anywhere, I pretty much just always take this with me. It's been in planes, trains, automobiles. I don't think a boat. I never thought I would be this passionate about making a tripod video. But when you get something like this and it makes your life so much easier, I think that's totally worth it. And I think that is something to be excited about. But more importantly, why I feel so strongly about making this video right now is I do not understand this world where people are spending hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand dollars on a little travel tripod like this. There is absolutely no reason to do that. This is a $200 travel tripod. And personally, I don't think unless you have some really specific needs that you should ever spend more than $200 on a travel tripod. When you see a whole bunch of review videos come out and they come out on the same day, what that means is that that product has been given to those reviewers ahead of time and they've been told a date that they're allowed to release their videos. Now most people are really genuine and really authentic and they give a nice honest review, but realistically, you play around with a piece of gear for a couple days or a couple weeks, you're not gonna totally understand it. It's not until you've really like had something for a while and used it in a whole variety of situations that you can really solidly recommend it or not. And I have used this tripod all over the world, crazy amount of conditions, and I strongly, strongly recommend this tripod. And if you're curious about any of my other gear, I did do a what's in my camera bag video, so if you wanna click on that and hop over, you can check out more of my camera gear.